Hello! Today we are embarking on a new video series. We are going to learn the new JavaScript features. As a group, these features have many names on the interwebs. ES6, ECMAScript 6, Harmony. ES 2015. Either way, we're gonna learn them one feature, one short video at a time. And today, we are learning about destructuring. What it is, why it's a good thing, and of course, how to use it. What is destructuring? Destructuring is a new feature of JavaScript that allows you to break apart, destructure, stuff into variables. Let me show you an example. Look at this animal object. It's of species dog, it has a weight and it makes a woof sound. Let's assign two of the properties to local variables. Woo, what happened here? Not sure, let's log it out and see. and run it. The dog says swoof! Let's add some spaces. The dog says woof. So there's some stuff going on here. What we're doing here is that we are destructuring the animal object into two local variables, species and sound. So when we do this, the properties sound and species are assigned to local variables, giving us the ability to access them here and here. That's essentially what destructuring does. You probably also noticed that I'm not running vanilla node here. I'm using something called Bobble. Bobble is super cool because it allows you to use JavaScript features from the future in Node and in browsers. It integrates into basically everything. Gulp, Grunt, Browserify, whatever you're using. Or in this case, I can just use it in console and pipe it to Node. So what I am doing is that I'm writing the Bobble command and my JavaScript file with ES6. Uh, JavaScript in it. Bobble will compile that to uh, normal JavaScript, ECMAScript file, basically. Let me just show you how that looks without piping it to Node. If you compare the Bobble output here with line 7 in the example.js file, you'll see that our ECMAScript 6 destructuring here has just been compiled down to ECMAScript 5 and this is also a good way of seeing what the hell is happening. We're gonna talk about how to use this in just a minute but first I want to spend some time talking about why you want to use this. The most common use case for destructuring is to make it easier to deal with option objects. By option objects I mean objects that you pass to a function which is a single object that might or might not contain several properties. If you have dealt with the Ajax function in jQuery, you recognize that pattern. Have a look at this code. We are calling a function called makeSound and we are passing in an options object. This is just an object literal with a few properties. Species, dog, weight, 23 and sound. Woof. We're first gonna implement the make sound function without using the structure. So make sound takes an options object and it's going to print something. Let's run that. Since we uh, 
don't use any ECMAScript 6 functions yet, we don't need to mess with Bubble, so I just run node example.js and the dog says woof. I'm going to make the example a little bit more complicated. We're going to make species an optional property on the options object. I'll remove species from the options object being passed into my sound. What is that? The undefined, says woof. Well, we can't have that. We want a default value. So we go options.species. So it's just option species if it exists. Otherwise, it will be animal. And we run that. The animal says woof. So let's talk about problems with this code. This is just a silly little example. But if this function was part of an actual program, it would be a lot bigger. So you have to remember that all the problems that we are going to talk about with this code are going to be a lot bigger in an actual piece of software. First of all, we notice that there's a lot of repetitions. We refer to options here a lot. It is also a bit hard to scan because everything is prefixed with these options references. The code would be more readable if they weren't there. Look at this. This is a lot more readable than this. It's also hard to see what make sound needs just by looking at it. I can, I, I actually have to go down into the um, function and see that, okay, it needs sound and, and it needs species. I can't just see that from make sound. And if this was bigger, again, I would have to go digging in the function and that's bad. Some of these problems are solvable without restructuring by just declaring variables at the top of the function. And we're gonna do that now. And sound as well. And then we can remove these option references. This is a bit better. There are fewer references to options. It is a bit easier to scan. I can just see species sound immediately. It is also a lot clearer what the function needs. Species sound because they're at the top of the function. But let's see if we can do this even better with destructuring. Right. So let's comment this out for comparison purposes and go var structure from options. We also need to handle that species are optional. Bubble example dot js Type that to note. The animals says woof. Still does. And now you're telling me, well, that is not that much shorter, right? It's it's still two lines. It's 64 characters versus what? 69 characters? It's only like a few characters shorter. Very astute of you. But what if I told you that you could do destructuring in the method signature and assign default values in it? <laughs> Fuck yeah! Okay, let's delete this crummy code here. And we're gonna move this into the function signature here. And we are gonna say that species is per default animal, remove this, and remove that, and run it. The animal still says woof. <laughs> and that is how you do destructuring. Now, there is even more cool stuff to do with destructuring. You can destructure properties into variables even if they are nested several layers deep 
and you are not limited to destructuring uh, objects. You can also destructure arrays. But I'll leave all that up to your curiosity. Today, we have learned the what, why, and how of destructuring. We've learned that destructuring is an ECMAScript 6 feature that allows you to break an object or array up into variables. And we've also seen that it's really handy when you're dealing with option objects. And we've seen some examples of how to do destructuring. In this series, I want to cover new and interesting JavaScript features. So, what do you guys want to see me cover next time? Comment down below or send me a tweet at mpjme and make sure that you don't miss out on the next episode. Subscribe by clicking uh, there-ish on my face and or follow me on Twitter. Until next time, stay curious.